Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out. And in the video today, surviving a two mile fall without a parachute and a 10 day trek alone in the Peruvian rainforest. On Christmas Eve 1971, just a few hours after attending her high school graduation, 17 year old Julianne Kupka and her mother, Maria, got on a flight from Lima, Peru to Pucallpa. The two were headed out to join Julianne's father, Hans Wilhelm, a famous German zoologist who was working at a remote research station in the rainforest. Approximately 30 minutes into the flight, Kupka would later state, The clouds became darker and darker, and the flight became more turbulent. Then we were in the midst of pitch black clouds and a proper storm with thunder and lightning. It was pitch black all around us and there was constant lightning. Then I saw a glistening light on the right wing. The motor was hit by lightning. While planes get struck by lightning all the time with no real problems ensuing, this time there was a big problem. Directly after the wing was struck, the aircraft was ripped apart, largely thanks to the fact that the Electra aircraft they were on wasn't built for flying in heavy turbulence to begin with due to the very rigid wings. Contrary to what is often reported, Kupka states the wing definitely didn't explode. Rather, the plane was simply ripped apart in the air after the wing fell off. The last words Kupka ever heard from her mother were when the lightning struck the wing, when she said, it's all over. Kupka described what happened next. I heard the incredibly loud motor and people screaming, and then the plane fell extremely steeply. And then it was calm, incredibly calm compared with the noise before that. I could only hear the wind in my ears. I was still attached to my seat. My mother and the man sitting by the aisle had both been propelled out of their seats. I was free falling. That's what I registered for sure. I was in a tailspin. I saw the forest beneath me like green cauliflower, like broccoli, is how I described it later on. Then I lost consciousness. Over the next 19 hours or so, Kupka lapsed in and out of consciousness, and at some point, unknown to her, she managed to unstrap herself from her seat and crawl under it. She thinks this was as a response to the rain. Finally, at 9 a.m., she became lucid and, in somewhat of a daze, took stock of her situation. She was lying on the ground, dressed only in a sleeveless mini dress, and was missing one of her sandals and her glasses. Though she didn't realize all her injuries at the time, she had survived the fall with a broken collarbone, a torn ACL, one of her eyes swollen shut, her capillaries in her eyes had popped due to rapid decompression from the plane, a strained vertebrae in her neck, a partially fractured shin, and several deep cuts on her arms and legs. But she was alive, the sole survivor of Lancer Flight 508, with all 91 other passengers and the crew dying. It took her half the day just to be able to stand without getting dizzy, but eventually she managed to do it, and she set out to find her mother, searching for a full day before giving up. During her search, though, she did find a bag of candy, which was her only food during her subsequent journey. She also, very importantly, found a stream. Her father had once given her the very good advice that if she were ever lost in the rainforest and came across a river or stream, she should follow it downstream because people tend to live on or near water. Following a river long enough should get you to civilization eventually. She then set out. She knew from experience that snakes particularly liked to lay camouflaged under dry leaves, so when she wasn't walking in the water, she used her one shoe thrown before her to test the ground for snakes and the like. Unfortunately, she couldn't see very well due to her missing glasses. Luckily, she never saw any snakes. She walked as much as possible in the river, as it was an easier way to go, rather than through the dense foliage. Of course, this came with hazards of its own. Within a couple of days, she started hearing king vultures around her, the sound of which she recognized from living at her parents' research station a year and a half before, only about 30 miles from where the plane crashed. Because king vultures only land when there is carrion around, she figured there must be dead bodies about that they were feeding on, but she didn't encounter any. On the fourth day, she finally spotted some, three other passengers still strapped to their seats and rammed several feet headfirst into the ground. I couldn't really see that much, only people's feet protruding up. I poked their feet with a stick. I couldn't touch the dead bodies. I couldn't smell anything, and they hadn't been eaten yet or started to decay. I mean, sure, decay must have started, but I couldn't notice it. I could tell it was a woman because she had polished toenails, and the others must have been two men, judging by their pants and shoes. I moved on after a while, but in the first moments after finding them, it was like I was paralyzed. 
During her trek, several of her wounds became infected, and a large cut on her right arm was infested with maggots. This is something she had seen happen to her dog before, with near disastrous results for their dog. Try as she might, though, she couldn't manage to get the maggots out, as they were in too deep in the wounds. She stated, I had this ring that was open on one side that you could squeeze together, and I tried with that. It didn't work because the hole was so deep, so I tried with a stick, but that didn't work either. On the tenth day, she came across a boat, which in her delirious state at this point, she thought was a mirage, until she finally came up to it and touched it. Next to the boat was a path, which she crawled up at this point, being extremely weak, making walking up the path somewhat difficult. At the end of the path was a small hut that was being used by lumbermen. Empty at the time, she found an outboard motor and some diesel fuel in a barrel. She used a tube to suck out some of the fuel from the barrel and put that on the wound that was maggot infested, something her father had done to their dog, though with kerosene. Albeit extremely painful, this worked, and most of the maggots, while initially trying to burrow deeper into her arm, eventually came to the surface and she was able to pick them out. She then tried to sleep in the hut, but found the ground to be much too hard, so she went back down to the riverside and lay in the sand. The next day, she woke up, hearing frogs all around her, and tried to catch some to eat. Luckily for her, she was unable to, because they were poisonous dart frogs. At this point, she was debating whether to take the boat or not, something she didn't want to do, as it was stealing, but ultimately, she decided to spend the night at the hut. She ended up not having to do so alone, though, because she soon heard voices, which she described as like hearing angels' voices. Three people came out of the forest and spotted her. At first, they thought she was a blonde, pale-skinned water spirit. She stated, When they saw me, they were pretty freaked out. However, she explained what had happened and how she got there, and they had heard of the plane crash, so they accepted her tale. They then fed her and cared for her wounds as best they could, and took her downstream on about a seven-hour boat ride to a lumber station. Once there, a local pilot knew of some missionaries nearby who were running a hospital. The pilot took her to the hospital in what must have been a fairly scary 15-minute flight. A day after her rescue, she was reunited with her father. She then helped the search parties locate the crash site. On January the 12th, they finally discovered her mother's body. Like Julianne, her mother miraculously survived the fall. However, her injuries prevented her from moving, and she ended up dying several days later. Now known as Julianne Diller, she has a PhD in zoology and is a librarian at the Bakarian State Zoological Collection in Munich. If you want to learn more about her, please do check out her autobiography, When I Fell From The Sky. So I really hope you enjoyed that video, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos every day of the week. Also, I've got another channel, it's called Biographics. It's biographies of notable people from the present day, as well as history. From Elon Musk to Osama Bin Laden, you can check it out through the icon on the screen now. But if you want something else to watch right now, why not check out another Today I Found Out video, or a Biographics video, over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.